Hi everybody, my name is Curtis, and I'm here to bring you another frequently asked question about Marvel's Epic Collections. This video is brought to you by the Epic Marvel Podcast, my very own podcast where we talk about Epic Collections in great detail, uh, available on all major podcast players. Now what is included in an Epic Collection? Like the insides, the issues, what makes up the table of contents of an Epic Collection? This is a question that gets asked to me quite often. People who are new to this don't really know, uh, but this is actually um, a really, really cool project that tries to collect unbroken runs from start to finish. Now the finish line, that's negotiables. There, there are different endpoints for different titles. That's a topic for a different frequently asked question video. But what I can say is that as far as the 60s to the 90s is concerned, these epic collections try to collect everything. They try to collect the entire publication history of a specific character. Now we're talking the issues starting from number one to wherever and the annuals because those are considered part of the actual publication history uh, and they throw in also relevant graphic novels, relevant miniseries, relevant other appearances. This video is going to take a closer look into what makes up the contents of the specific books. Way back in the 60s when Marvel first started publishing their superhero books, some of their books like Fantastic Four got awarded their own books right away, but because of the restraints of the distribution, they had to bundle their characters together in a lot of sense. So um, there's a, a title like Tales of Suspense had half of it devoted to Iron Man and half of it devoted to Captain America. The Epic Collections don't collect Tales of Suspense in its entirety, they've split it up into characters. So when you have a Captain America epic collection, you'll get the Tales of Suspense stories, and then you'll find the other part in the Iron Man epic collections. And that's the same for the Hulk, for Ant-Man, uh, for Namor the Submariner, uh, a bunch of these characters that shared books with other characters. Of course, there are ones like Spider-Man and Avengers and Fantastic Four, which had their books from the get-go, and those are collected in full. As far as the annuals are concerned, it was Marvel's practice often in the 80s and 90s to have storylines that continued through multiple characters' annuals. It would start in Punisher, and then it would continue in Incredible Hulk, and then in Silver Surfer and in Daredevil. In some of those cases, the epic collection will only include one chapter of that story if the character is only relevant for that one chapter. If the character is relevant for more than one chapter, they may include more chapters. Uh, they do provide a little text boxes so that you can still get kind of the story and you're not left kind of hanging. They do sort of resolve it in that way. But for those of us who are collecting all of the epic collections, we don't want those collected four times in, its, in their entirety. So the way they're doing it, I think is a, is a good compromise for that. There are titles like Fantastic Four that have an unbroken run, but what about titles like Doctor Strange, which had a 60s run, they had a, a title in the 70s and 80s, and they had a title in the 90s. The Epic Collections bridge all of those together. They, they group them all together. And so the Doctor Strange ones, yes, they do include all of those different titles. Silver Surfer had a new series in the 80s, so it has the 60s, it has the 80s series. And even the Hulk had the six issues at the very beginning and then it got cancelled and then he appeared in Tales to Astonish, it collects all of that together. So it follows the history of the characters. What's not included are spin-off titles. So Spider-Man, we have an amazing Spider-Man epic collection, but we don't have, yet, we don't have Spectacular Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man, we don't have those secondary and tertiary titles. Certain issues do show up if it's relevant to what's happening in Amazing Spider-Man, like if the story's continued. Uh, so we will get those odd issues, but we are all hoping that we will see Spectacular Spider-Man and Web of Spider-Man epic collections at some point. Uh, likewise with X-Men, so far we have X-Men epic collections that collect all of Uncanny X-Men, but where does that stand with the X-Men title from the 90s? We don't quite know how the epics are going to tackle that one yet. For titles that had a name change or an obvious change in direction, let's say New Mutants to X-Force, or Luke Cage to Power Man and Iron Fist, those ones are getting their own epic collections. When you get a name change, then we have a new name change in the Epic Collections as well. Another one of the mandates of the Epic Collection is to show the character's history, how the character evolved, and provide the reader with a good reading experience 
um, for the way that the story is being told. So in some cases, like Silver Surfer here, we have um, a full volume of stuff that happens before the actual series hits. All of these stories in here are collected from Fantastic Four. For some people, if you're collecting all of the epic collections, this is kind of a pointless volume because you have all the material already. But if you're just interested in Silver Surfer and you want to know where his origins are and how it leads into his ongoing series, this is a good place to start. Similar things happen with uh, the Black Widow epic collection. There are a couple of different instances where uh, there's a bunch of stuff before. On the other side of that, the Wolverine epic collection starts when he gets his own ongoing series. It doesn't include the famous Hulk battle where he first appears, nor does it include the major stories from the pages of Uncanny X-Men, because that's a lot. Uh, you probably have to get a, a bunch of different uh, epic collection volumes before this one. With Wolverine, this title showed a different direction for the character. He got a new name. He was called Patch. He was living in Madripoor. It was a completely new direction, divorced from what was happening in Uncanny X-Men. So it made sense for the epic collections to start here, especially since there are also X-Men collections. So you can still get those stories. Uh, you just gotta buy the X-Men ones. The epic collections like to also include a bunch of bonus stuff, which I find really exciting. This is stuff that may not be reprinted very regularly, may not find homes elsewhere. Very cool that they are including it in the Epic Collections. So for instance, Excalibur Volume 1 has a few issues of Captain Britain to get Captain Britain's origin story. It also has a serialized story from Marvel Comics Presents that ran over like eight issues or something like that and also has some of the original graphic novels. So you're gonna constantly see things like issues from Marvel Fanfare, Marvel Premiere, Marvel Comics Presents uh, included in here if they're character specific uh, to, to bulk up the issues but then also just to make them actually epic. Uh, what a great way to, to just get more material. Like I said before, the Epic Collections really focus on telling the character's story. So as we get further along in the timeline and you reach the 90s, you know, the tie-ins and the characters, the, the whole history of Marvel kind of gets a little bit more convoluted. So there are some Epic Collections like this one where there are actually more issues of X-Factor in this volume of X-Men than there are issues of Uncanny X-Men. And that's because they've chosen to make sure that we have a good reading experience, that the story of the characters really um, is told in a way that, that makes our reading experience, you know, a really good one. What I really love about this is that they've thought this out. Uh, they know where their volume breaks are gonna be, they know what bonus stuff they're gonna include. The fact that they're publishing them out of order means that they can't change this. Uh, all of the volumes are going to be as epic as this one here. And that's all I have for this frequently asked question, what is included in an epic collection? If you have things that you think I missed or, or are things that you think I'm wrong about, then please leave a comment and I'll address them in the comments there. Or maybe I'll make a new video if it's a frequently asked question, who knows? You can also join our Facebook group if you look up Epic Collection Admiration on Facebook. You'll find um, a great community of people who will, are happy to answer any more of your questions of Epic Collections. Um, you can also listen to my podcast find me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. And don't forget to like and subscribe this video and you'll be alerted when the next Frequently Asked Question video pops up on the good old YouTube. So I hope you enjoyed this. That's all for me today. See you next time.